This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids. This is going to be a supplement to my lecture on bending and the flexure formula and how it's derived. Now, the book talks in chapter 6.3, um, shows a very good der uh, development of the concept that strain is linear from a bending strain, uh, which is a normal strain perpendicular to the surface, the cut section. Bending strain to that is proportional, linearly proportional to the distance from a neutral axis at which there is no strain. Above the neutral axis you'll have either tension or compression and below it you'll have uh, a shortening or a lengthening and vice versa below the neutral axis. <clears throat> so the book shows how it's derived from due to a, a moment the strain distribution is derived in that way there's this point of curvature out here and strain is a linear function of the distance from the neutral axis y over rho that radius of curvature. Well, we're going to relate linear strain distribution through Young's modulus, E, to a linear stress distribution. This is assuming linear elastic behavior. Keep it on that section of the curve, of the stress-strain curve. So we can show that positive moment will create compression, just as it creates shortening in the top part of the beam. It'll create... Uh, compression, compressive stresses in the top part of the beam and tensile stresses because it's lengthening in the bottom part of the beam. And we're going to relate these distances from the neutral axis. We're going to call C is the distance, the furthest distance from the neutral axis to a point on the section. Y is just any distance from the neutral axis. Up is positive in our sign convention. And so just as the stress, the strain is linear, the stress is linear, and it's the maximum stress up here at the top, which is related to the maximum strain, is uh, the thing that we, we're going to measure stress at any point y as negative y over c times the maximum stress, sigma max. Then we're going to go to statics and a, a sum of forces and sum of moments to talk about how the book does the, the calculus way. I kind of just look at it as a stress is, or force is equal to stress times area, which is just what they're doing there. So I can take this stress distribution, triangular, and I can multiply all of those stresses times all the little elemental areas and do an integral. And I can see that the stress resultant force is just the integral of that stress distribution over the area of the cross section. And by equilibrium, those forces have got to be equal. And I can locate the centroid of them and where they act, and that's a distance y from the neutral axis. And I can say the sum of moments is... The internal moment is equal to the sum of the uh, compressive stress force resultant on the top times its y distance to the neutral axis plus the tensile stress force resultant times y on the bottom. So from all that, I can get that the moment is equal to this formula, sigma max over c times this integral which we'll recall from statics is the second moment of the area about the neutral axis, y, integral y squared dA. And we call that the moment of inertia, sort of the resistance to rotation about its neutral axis or its centroidal axis. And the letter we use for that is I. So we can rewrite the maximum stress formula and the stress at any point in this manner. The maximum stress is the internal moment times that C furthest distance to the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia. Similarly, the stress at any point Y from the neutral axis is just negative MY over I. The negative is necessary due to our sign convention of 
what a positive moment is. It creates cupping on the top of a beam, positive internal moment. It creates compression on the top of a beam. Since y, we're going to measure positive from the neutral axis up, I need this negative sign to convert positive moment on the top part of the beam into negative stress or compression. And we'll talk about that more in this example down here. These are the flexure formulas, the two different versions of them. So the important points to note about bending are the bending causes a normal stress, a tension, and a compression stress. And the point number two is there is a neutral axis in A, is how we're going to abbreviate it, with zero stress. It's right there in the center. And the neutral axis is at the centroid of the cross section, which is just a geometric property. Number three, strain and stress vary linearly from the neutral axis, as I've shown in these drawings. And finally, the flexure formula is based on a sum of moments equation, where the internal moment is equal to the moment from the stress distribution about the neutral axis. That's what we showed up here. It's easy to show this on a, an example. This I've taken this from 613 in the book where they have a cantilever channel beam and they show the cantilever and they calculate as you can the internal moment is equal to 4.859 kilonewton meters. It's a cantilever so the it's a negative moment. It causes compression on the bottom, and we'll talk about that here in a second, too. Here's the cross section, and it's these dimensions. It's a channel turned on its side, turned on its ears, as we used to call it. Here's the dimensions. Um, you need to, A big part of this flexure stuff is calculating moment of inertias of different shapes and finding the centroids which you have to do first. So I don't want to spend time on that. There is an appendix A in the book that's got a good review of what you learned in statics about finding centroids and determining moment of inertias. So I'm going to skip over that and just tell you that the centroid of this C shape, channel shape, is 59.09 millimeters down from the top. Of course, you can measure it from the bottom. It's the same point. And the moment of inertia is 42.26, 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth, which is how the book shows it. As you know, I prefer things in millimeters. So that's what it is in millimeters to the fourth. Um, it's going to be handy to know what that distance from the neutral axis down to the bottom, and that's just the height 200 minus 59.09. 140.91 millimeters. Okay, the maximum bending stress from this formula, these formulas, occurs at the furthest distance, which we've defined as C, from the neutral axis. So I've only got 59 and a little bit millimeters to the top from the neutral axis, but I've got 140, almost 141 millimeters down from the neutral axis to the bottom. So my maximum stress is going to occur there, and I've called that point B. Sigma max is equal to sigma at B is MC over I, where C is the furthest distance. Then I need to introduce my sign convention, negative sign. So I have a negative MY over I. Okay, in this case, I determine it's a cantilever. My internal moment is a negative moment. So it's negative. 4.859, the book gives the answer in kilonewton meters, which is fine. We'll just convert it to newton millimeters, which I've done with this thousand and this thousand. But the important point is it's a negative. Then my distance from the neutral axis down is a negative number. So I have a negative times a negative, which is a positive, and then a negative of that. I put the moment of inertia in the bottom and I get negative 16.2 megapascals. The negative sign means it's compression. It's on the bottom. It's a negative moment causing compression on the bottom, tension on the top. I want to see the stress at point A on the top corner. Or any point along that top surface is negative MY over I. Once again, we'll see the sign convention come into play. 
I've got the same negative sign, negative moment, and my y distance is positive up 5909. Put in i, I get a negative times a negative or a positive 6.79 megapascals tension on the top at A. And here down I want to do a little bit more than what the book does. I want to figure out the force resultant. So I want to know what that stress is at that point where the web joins the flange of the channel. Okay, so I just need to know where that point is from the neutral axis and if it's 5909 from the neutral axis to the top and it's 20 millimeters down to where that the web starts or where the web ends and the flange starts that means that's 39.09 is that distance so not to, my drawings not to scale so that distance is 3909 so I substitute that into that formula for the flexure formula and I get a stress of positive because it's, I've forgotten my negative out here, anyway, it's a negative times a negative, so it's 4.495 megapascals right there at that intersection where the web meets the flange. So now I want to check my stress distribution and see if it's really true that the forces are equal. And so I, um, I want to draw my section here, cross section, and then draw it looking at it the side, and draw my st stress distribution. We're going to do this quite a bit. You need to be good at this. Uh, it's just triangles and with the tip at the zero at the neutral axis. So I've drawn the stress at A, 679. The stress at the web, just linear along that line, 4.459. And the stress on the bottom is negative, 16.2 megapascals. So now it's just geometry. I just want to do the integral of the stress times the area. Okay, so this is a the stress on the web. This part up here, the horizontal part, is just the average stress. It's just a trapezoid, 6.79 plus 4.459 divided by 2 times the area of the web, which is... It's 280 millimeters wide, 250 plus 15 plus 15, times 20 millimeters thick. Do all the math, it works out to be 31.6 kilonewtons is that force, which I've called FW, force in the web. Then I've got to account for this little part of the flanges that is in tension. So it's just a little triangle, 4.459 to zero, so it's a triangle, one half of that, times the area of the webs, of the flanges, which is 39.09 is the height. There's two of them, and they're 15 millimeters wide, so it's 2.61 kilonewtons. That should be equal to this stress distribution block resolved into a force, which is the area of this triangle, one half its base, 16.2. Its area is the areas of these two flanges, which is 140.91. It's the height of that rectangle. There's two of them, and they are 15 millimeters wide. Do all the math, so the tension, the compression resultant force, 34.2, equals to the sum of the tension. Uh, resultant forces. So that checks.